Rancast. Rancast. Yeah. All right. The Rantcast returns. Shout out to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. Check out his stuff on YouTube. Strange Bus is back. Oh. Hey, and we got the old, uh, the old screen of fire with both of us. Now I'm gonna try to get you on screen here in a second, my friend. All right. Let me just do that now. Sorry about the outside ambience. I am outside. Excellent. All right, we're dousing the flames. This is episode 42. Redcast. Redcast. Trying to start my pipe cast. Pipe cast. All right. How, how you been? You, you've been gone for a while, as we know. Oh. Well, for starters, I'm on the front deck of my new home. Um, All right. Setup isn't currently set up yet. Um, we are still currently unpacking, so it's been a long week uh, getting everything moved around. Uh, so, kind of what took so long, because I've been gone for almost two months, if not two months, really. Um, my plan was to be gone for one month or one and a half, so I'm a little off schedule. I uh, thought I was starting like end of May going into June. Or end of April going into May, I thought we were going to start packing up, starting those plans there. So I started my highlights a little early. Um, but that's kind of why I've been gone. About like 10 days early before I started making calls. Um, I then had a job where I had to go out for a week and lift machines to and from about 80 or 90 machines. And then right after that, I had to start packing. So... Uh, when I came home to start packing, I tore a muscle in my lower back, right below my shoulder blade, Ooh. on the left side, and just put me out. Um, I mean, we still had to move with it, but it was just, it made the move a lot slower. So, I'm just now getting better, and we just now have almost everything moved in. So, it's going to be a little, like, probably another, like, maybe close to a week before we can get some packed. My setup is... I think I sent a picture of what it looks like. It's a lot better than that picture on my Discord now. But I still have nothing set up yet. So yeah. I'm operating my phone. Um, it's been rough, but the, the, light, the light is starting to show pretty much at that end of the tunnel. And I'm finally able to sit down, relax, um, enjoy the peace and quiet that this place has to offer. Um, it's summertime, so we get motorcycles and people fireworks every now and then because it's close to July. But oh yeah, it's fireworks! Here, you know, so I'm enjoying it. Wife just waved at me. So, but yeah, it's it's been a it's been a wonderful like just day day and a half of just relaxing, catching my bearings, moving uh, stuff a little bit here and there, and um, for everybody who does watch me stream or at least tunes into the, the podcast uh, I appreciate you waiting on me I appreciate you Kurgan for taking over uh, so many times because uh, literally my life's been unpredictable so um, just kind of how it's been going but yeah that's, that's pretty much what's been going on so pretty much for the last month yeah so Luca Rock says welcome back it's great yeah, I was gonna say, other than the the horrific injury that you mentioned there, you're look, looking looking good, looking healthy, looking like uh, kicking back. Oh yeah, I'm. Um, I think this is the first or second time I've gotten to use this thing since I got got to the new place, so it's nice. Yeah, and I got to sit back a couple times when I was moving and have a cigar and a drink and kind of unwind a little bit. But when you've got when you've been moving for like six hours, like I. I'm pretty sure a lot of people know because they've been in a move, but like, you know, with four kids, like when you have a big family, you have a lot to move. So moving everything from one place to another, we don't live too far to, from our new place. It's about seven to ten minutes. Um, just moving all the heavy stuff, getting all that done, and then being able to sit down, it's not the same feeling. It's just like, you know, because everything aches, hurts, you just want to go to bed. You know, like, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the heat wave that we've had over here. It's been like hundred degree heat, so yeah. 
nice and cool now. It's been raining. It's wonderful. I can hear, you know, I live kind of out in the, like in between the cities now. So I'm not in the city anymore or in a town. I'm right outside of town. So literally people they talk to me. It's just hay bales. So that's, that's what I'm looking at. That's my view. It's cool. It's and it, idyllic, as they say, little uh, country countryside. Yeah, it's, to me, it's a wonderful view, and I think I've talked about it a couple times. It's it's kind of where I wanted to be because I get good internet still, but I'm not surrounded by the hustle and bustle. So, um, it's it's real it's real nice. Yeah, it's fun. real nice. It's real quiet at nighttime. Um, and my neighbors are wonderful people. I've got an old couple that lives to my right and then there's a younger couple who's my left and they have four kids too so my my kids instantly clicked and they got to play and oh that's great um yeah so it was it's been a nice transition i thought the transition would be a lot rougher than it was no but it was it was a wonderful transition so i got to be able to to relax and chill and um even though i still got some stuff to do at the old place um it made leaving that place a lot easier because I did like living over there, but um, yeah, I, I feel like we're going to make some memories here, so it's that's a lot great. nicer. That's great, man. I'll have to come yeah. visit you sometime, make some stovetop, <laughs> play some games. Hey, and this is kind of like one of those places that got renovated, but it's still got that old house feel. Oh, so yeah. definitely make some stovetop on the old <laughs> stove. <up. laughs> it's great. Yeah, we always we always joke about how like, you know, somebody gets some really rare game and it's like, dang it, you know, how do you get so lucky? It's like, well, just make have your mom make stovetop. <laughs> we'll come visit you. <laughs> we can all enjoy it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, see here I was I was uh gonna grill you on all this Star Wars stuff, but it looks like you've you've had your hands full as far as things. I mean good things mostly. Mm -hmm. But uh there's a lot of uh, disappointed Star Wars fans out there, and I know that's like nothing new. That's that's been a while. There's been some uh, uh, rumblings and grumblings. Like I I don't I don't I'm not with it as much. I mean I I like the original movies. I like some of the expanded universe and some of the games, but I mean I feel bad for people. I feel bad that like they get excited for stuff and then they just get let down. Like time after time and i know so, we don't don't have the exact same perspective on that but i do want to hear kind of what your what your thoughts are so i haven't had a chance to to watch jackal yet even though i did i think the first couple of episodes came out right before i moved um i was more concerned with good tv yeah um, the boys i don't know if you've ever heard of that show say it again. but i the boys oh yeah yeah so, uh-huh Season four just dropped recently on Amazon, and I was hopping on that bandwagon for a while. Um, and then I was going to sit at night. I was like, you know, I'll take a night and watch a couple episodes of The Acolyte, even though it doesn't look too appealing. Um, the trailer at first did look a little appealing, and yeah, then I caught a review from like big time uh, YouTubers and streamers that I watch um, of how dog shit it was. So they lost Star Wars um, theory. They lost yeah, it. which yeah, which was big. I mean that like, guy, I, that was into that. He was like, wasn't he? Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't he one of the most positive? Like he cried during the Mandalorian. Like he would always find the sil silver lining, and you lost that guy. So to be fair, with the Mandalorian, the first couple of seasons mm -hmm. were a lot of people liked. I mean, it did have its diversity. Like there were some people that didn't like it a lot, but like. Up until about, what, season three? Um, I liked it up until, like, mid-season three, where it kind of lost me a little bit. Mm. Um, well, it divert it, they took a break, and they did the Book of Boba Fett, and you started getting yeah. complaints. Cracks were showing in the in the armor. The The honeymoon it, was it, over. It's funny, because, like, um, what was it, Critical or Charlie, Penguin Zero, he goes by many names. He oh, says that's critical. the worst. You think that's he thinks that's worse than the acolyte, um, which I, I don't 
I can't possibly think that that's worse. I like I didn't mind Book of Boba Fett. Like to me, I never, I never one, saw it. It's an it's an arc to an old man that is. I feel it did and didn't need to be done. It was to me. It's kind of like once again, it was kind of like Andor, but they did Andor well enough to where I bought into it. So mm-hmm. or Rogue One. And a lot of people are even saying now that Rogue One was ni- was nice in comparison to other things. Like <laughs> everything gets better with age. Well, yeah, and well, like the, but Star like, Wars, the Star Wars holiday. But... I listen, listen. I gotta inter- interject this. Um, I know that Rotten Tomatoes is not a reliable gauge of anything, but no. the the uh, people were pointing out the Rotten Tomatoes audience score for the Star Wars holiday special is higher than the Acolyte. <laughs> like, eh. yeah. Well, so so what gets me here is that um, even though I haven't watched it, the stuff that I have seen on it has been pretty trash. And uh, even though I can't get too riled up here on this rant cast because I'm outside, and yeah. my wife is like really a doorway, so um, I can tell you that um, there really needs to be some changes because I feel like if this is work of Kathleen Kennedy's like ham hawking. Um, I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's a a thing where we're trying to like diverse Star Wars too much or what. I, I don't. I don't know. But um, I think the comment was made by Kennedy in turn that like uh, the reason the the acolytes uh, review ratings were so low were the fact that there were too many males in Star Wars right now. Too many male fans. What and that. Don't like they don't like female protagonists, which I'm going to cl- not only call bullshit on that, but because <laughs> most even most classic and modern Star Wars fans today, even ones that are male, I bet you you guys watched Aliens. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know there are even old Star Wars had you know you had Princess Leia, mm-hmm. you know, had you had Ripley, you had all sorts of game protagonists from back in the day. That were that were women, yeah. So you're regarding a lot of the '80s and '90s. Samus was a female, and even introduced into the GameCube days, even in the early aughts. Like, yes, you had your controversies, but people, you still have a huge fan base, and a lot of those people, like who like Star Wars, they don't just like Star Wars; they like other types of media. Yeah, I love and, Terminator and Alien uh, series, and. It, yeah, to you, me, it's what garbage, a, right? What a what a cop out! What a what an excuse! And anybody who hasn't like, because I can't I can't accurately without doing my homework, and I didn't do my homework for this podcast because I'm like I said I'm I'm with you guys on the phone. But yeah. the uh, if you look up pretty much an overview of the Ac- acolyte, which I did look up, and I didn't just go off other people's word, right? Um, I just looked up some cliff notes and stuff. The plot for that. That series is dog, just sounds dog shit. Um, not to mention the fact that they have enormous plot holes in it. I guess there's a scene where they're tracking the supposed killer, and the reason the supposed killer is doing what they're doing is because they're related to one of the Jedi or something like that. And there's like a scene where they flash back, and they don't want the the girl who is a Jedi now. She told this lady that she's leaving to become a Jedi and she didn't want her to leave. So she tries to kill everybody. She ends up killing her family. But like how she does it is she lights their house on fire with a book or a stone, but their entire house is made of something that wouldn't naturally light on fire. Well, <laughs> like it, because they look like stone houses or some shit, but everything lights on fire. Like it's covered in match fluid. Man. <laughs> so, I've I've heard some what? wild stuff too. Like, well, but but I mean, some of it. Like, I'm not excited to watch this show, but I feel like maybe some of the some of it in context would be okay because they were saying, "Oh, there's fire in space," but I'm like, but in Star Wars generally, like they kind of ignore physics for a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, and that's fine. And, yeah, that's fine. And check this out. And although this is a really controversial topic, um, they're saying that. Um, they're introducing magic into Star Wars. So, like, there's magic and the Force are, like, at odds. 
And I was thinking, well, I guess there was a little bit of magic in like one of the Ewok specials. You had a witch who could like disappear and Isn't that what the force is? Yeah, it's just magic by another name. You know, they've quantified it and explained it and slapped a lunchbox on it and pretty soon, you know, <laughs> there it is. So and I can't even blame I can't even blame Disney anymore. Mm. Because it's not even the Disney Corporation that's coming up with this shit. They're the ones who are just saying, you know, make all these series and make it sell, right? It's the people who are doing it now that are fucking it up. Oh man, I heard I heard something else here. So uh, yeah, I didn't do much homework either. Supposedly they made action figures of all these characters and then killed them off, like this season. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's not too out of the realm of you know possibility for Star Wars because I mean you had action figures of characters that were just in the background like for one scene you know you got that you had the cantina aliens you had java's people they were just they were cool looking but they really didn't have a big part but and and i was thinking well we we before the stream started we talked a little bit about some of the things we've heard about the continuity of the timeline like they don't know the difference between a millennia and a century um yeah but then i was thinking well but couldn't someone come back and say well, didn't George Lucas like change his own continuity talking about like you had this impression that the Clone Wars and the disappearance of the Sith and the Jedi, like um, the Republic's foundation, all these things like took place a long, long, you know, generations and generations ago. And then it's like, oh, no, it was just a thousand years. So is this any worse than that? But then I was thinking, well, to come back to that and it would help to see it in context, of course, is were they violating George Lucas's stuff for a good reason? Like if you, if you change the continuity, but it makes it better, I can maybe forgive that. But if you're just going to change it just to change it and just, just screw with people's like expectations, that doesn't do anything. That seems like stupid and counterproductive. So to me, Star Wars made sense with Lucas. It doesn't make sense here. Hmm. It doesn't make sense on an enjoyable aspect. The only way it does is if you just watched it and you blocked out everything else. <laughs> Which, the Star Wars universe, as big as they're building it, you can't. No. Like, most people who watch Star Wars, they don't just watch The Acolyte. They watched, you know, the trilogy and the prequels and the sequels and they watched everything else. And it's that shit be, adds up. Yeah, it's supposed to be building building. together. Yeah, pieces of a puzzle. It's not just, oh, here's a one-off that doesn't have to have continuity with anything else, like a comic book. Like, here, here's a comic book where uh, Peter Parker is, like, 500 pounds. Like, no. <laughs> oh, that'd be kind of funny. Yeah, it would. Make it happen, Marvel. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, Kiati Mundi shows up as a spoiler, guys, if you're ever interested in this thing. Um which I don't think he was supposed to be alive in that time. And not to mention the fact that they also do this weird thing where, yes, the, the Jedi were always portrayed as like kind of like a dogmatic, um, very strict, very anal uh, people in the prequels, which gives that appeal. Um, in this one, they make them look like an undercover, weird CIA. Like, they do evil shit in the background. They cover things up. So if there's a fuck up, they don't want to look bad. They're gonna they're gonna wipe it off the map, redacted sort of shit. Um, it really, uh, really leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And like, it, because that that's not supposed to be the general view of the Jedi at all. And that's not just in my mind, right? Naturally. Um, I'd have the argument with somebody about like the prequels and stuff, like when people say like, "Well, it'd be better just to be a Sith at this point," because the Jedi are so like dogmatic and yeah. brutal, and then they they make people they make people want to join the dark side anyway. And I was like, "Well, the Jedi were supposed to be portrayed as heroes at one point in time," yeah. and to me, that's how they were originally portrayed: is they were supposed to be good people. You gave up everything to be that good person. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, that's not how it's viewed. It's viewed as you gave up everything. Because they just said so. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, you're just, you're just, you know, in, you're just in a cult. That's a tool of the, of the, of the corrupt state. That's all it is. At, at one point in time, 
And like I said, it even makes sense later on, because at one point in time, whether you're looking at canon or legends, Luke ends up training. Well, now, no, never mind. I think canon's worse, but in legends, Luke ends up training an entire like a uh, group of Jedi that can love or attach because the, the both sides of the force are created pretty much equal. Um, He's figured out a way to integrate the unifying force and the living force so that people are not... It, you have to know wrong from right, pretty much, which is like a great way of thinking. It's like, hey, if this looks bad, seems bad, tastes bad, smells bad, don't do it. You know? Um... So, and I think that's a great, that's a great view. You're welcome. But yeah, so, I, uh, yeah, I think it's a great view on this. I think that, um, I think it's kind of crap how they, how they portrayed it in the sequels, but, um, you know, I can't, you know, that's not even where I'm going with it. It's such as life, you know what I mean? But, and sorry about the background noise, but. That's fine. Yeah. But anyway, it's uh I feel like Star Wars is one of those things. Unfortunately, they've made it at one time, point in time, they made it so special that to branch out from it, you had to do it very carefully. And I know it wasn't always perfectly handled. I mean, Lucas proved some stuff that was pretty mediocre uh during his tenure, but it's like with something like Batman or Spider-Man, you can be more experimental. You can have one-off stories that don't have the same tone or the same continuity as the main story. And it doesn't mess with anything because people know that the main theme is still there. The stuff that you like is still there. It's just kind of like you're just taking a little side trip. But with Star Wars, it's it's weird because, yeah, there is this sort of sense that it's like, oh, okay, this happened, and then this other thing happened. And while that was happening, this other thing was happening. So it's all supposed to fit together, and then when they, it looks like they're not even trying to make that uh, coherent, it's just it really screws up. And it's like, I get it. You, you, you can't make every novel, every comic, and every game, like, work together. But when you're making these, these big-budget TV shows, it's like, you should you should be able to figure it out. Right, and, and and people 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 gave Lucas crap for when he, you know, the I remember the old argument was, you know, Obi Wan is either a pathological liar or he doesn't remember anything, <laughs> because he'll say stuff about the past and it's like then you see it in the prequels and it's like oh it's not it wasn't that way, and it's like okay was that just him like coloring the past to give Luke a certain presentation. Or was it like Lucas just wanted to change the story and he was trapped by his own story, painting himself in a corner? It's like, okay, there's that, but it's like they care even less than Lucas did to like keep it within the same right. storyline. Hey, Kurgan, do we have anybody in chat right now? Uh, well, we had um, Luca, Luca Rocks. He had to go. Okay. Oh, Jacer's here. Yeah. Hey, Jacer. Want to check just in case, because I can't see chat right now. Well, that's fine. I'll I'll try to let you know. Yeah, so All we right. got Strange Buzz back. He's uh live on location at his new place. Uh, my comment earlier was Jedi Pinkertons. <laughs> it's like uh, this is the Jedi Order. We hear you uh you got some magic cards you weren't supposed to get. So uh, if you know what's good for you, you know, hand those over. Take your review down. Your free speech is compromised. Yep. I mean, I don't know that the idea of the Jedi being something else, like they're some kind of, I don't know, space cops or uh, space CIA. I mean, that could be kind of an interesting concept for a story, but I, it I doesn't think, sound like they're doing it in an appropriate way. They're just kind of like the temple itself, like the Jedi temple on Coruscant, at being like shady as fuck. I don't, I don't know. Um. Like I said, anything else, like with Andor and stuff, having it be a crime drama where, like, the Rebel Alliance had to do some, some sh like, seedy shit to get by. They weren't always, like, good, bright heroes. Like, to me, that makes more sense because it's kind of like, and, like, to me, that's, 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 like, headcanon, right? That's something that you, you put in your head to make, like, the, I guess the series more comfortable for you. Yeah. Um, and maybe it is just me. Right? Maybe some people like the fact that, like, they want the Jedi to be all fucking corrupt and shit. Mm -hmm. But I feel like every generation that we get by in Star Wars, 
they make the good guys more evil and the evil more like justified. Yeah, I don't like that. It's like, what's why can't you just have a story where there's I, heroes and villains? I feel like that's not only weird, but it's also like, does that reflect on people's behavior at all? Like, or their internal monologue? Like, is it a, like, no, it's not okay, like, to do your bad deeds because the people who are supposed to protect you are doing bad things. Yeah. And if like, we want to make a story outspoken to where your heroes aren't really heroes, then let's do that. But you're pretty much painting black on black right at that point. Yeah. It's like, um, uh, the police are corrupt, so therefore I want to be Tony Montana. And I'll say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, you don't want to be him. You understand why maybe he went that way, but he just screwed himself over. Like, that was the whole point. Oh. I mean, like I said, I haven't watched the Acolyte yet um, in full, so I can't make an, an informed, really informed decision. I just have done some homework on it. Do so, you think, do you think you will watch it though? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I'll make it past the first episode, and that's saying something because usually I give all Star Wars a chance. I even rewatched Kenobi not too long ago because I was starting my Star Wars a thon again before I started watching The Boys, and that was Rebels, Kenobi, or no, it was I was doing. Um, I did Clone Wars, uh, Episode 3, then I did, um, you know, I did uh, Kenobi, Rogue One, or not Rogue One, uh, Solo, then I did Rebels, then it's supposed to be Rogue One. Oh, man. But I was trying to do things in, in order again, so I could kind of rewatch and get the feel of things. And I, I like I said, I still enjoy Rebels quite a lot. Okay. As for a cartoon, it was very enjoyable to watch. There's some filler in there that kind of just, like, makes you want to skip it, but... Like, the main parts were nice. And I think the, when you start to get to the final seasons, to me, it's where it starts to get weird. You get that weird, like, force portal, and then, like, the oh. Soka contact still kind of makes me salty. I've heard about that. The world between the worlds. People were saying that that yeah. was going to happen in the live-action shows, too. But it hasn't yet that I know of. Oh, uh, that's how they'll do it. That's how they'll do it. They'll say, like, oh, it was all... A dream slash time travel slash parallel universes yeah i think ashoka visited the world between the worlds when she was dying either she was in the force ether or something because she had to face anakin there and relive the clone wars and shit that's where the fun begins because i i watched ashoka i watched parts of ashoka i didn't finish it that's where i couldn't start i couldn't finish the star wars series was that Oh, so you you thought Ahsoka was bad? It's just boring. Oh. It, you know, I didn't mind. I didn't, I can't remember her name anymore. I can't. I can't. Like I usually try to keep an actress's name in 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 tow because I remember her from like Clerks and shit. So like, yeah, they give her a paycheck to play Ahsoka, and she plays Ahsoka, but like, she has like this deadpan face most of the time. Oh yeah, people were making fun of that. And like, she doesn't. Like, I I don't know I don't know who like fucking because it's supposed to be Rosario Dave Filoni Dawson? debut yeah Rosario Dawson so like I feel like cause it's supposed to be Dave Filoni's first time at the helm doing something live. Oh yeah, people were saying oh he doesn't know how to do live action, but I guess he he has done it outside of Star Wars. I just haven't seen anything it's, it's, that he's done. Like I've told you before, man, it doesn't matter what I think, it matters what the youngins think. You know what I mean? So, I mean, kids fucking ate that shit up. I don't know how many times on my YouTube feed I got that Anakin versus Ahsoka bullshit. And, like, like I said, that scene was fun. It was fun to watch. But, like, like I said, after I got past that part, I got to the hyperspace whales, and then I fell asleep. Oh, shoot. Man. <laughs> See, I haven't seen I, the show, but I... I... I listened to some videos where people were just like ripping it apart and they're talking about well, yeah, farting space whales and they're just like, no. Face. There's another guy who plays like the bad guy. He's supposed to be a dark Jedi, not a Sith. He's like a dark Jedi. Dark and he, Jedi. he fucking sells the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, and, and then the actor passed away. So that was passed the away. story. But like, he does really well with that. And the whole thing between Sabine, like Sabine's arc was really nice. Because like I said, the Rebels kind of, like the, some, some of the characters in Rebels appear. 
but I didn't get to the part where Ezra shows up. I like I said I got to the episode right before he shows up, and everybody kept telling me keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. But like I said, man, my life is like super busy, so if that shit don't hold my attention, I I forget and I just start going on to the next thing. See, like, so you're not not so different than the kids these days. You gotta click, swipe, swipe right, swipe left, go to the next thing. I just require I have finer tastes. I don't just eat McDonald's all the time. Yeah, yeah. And they, that's not meant to be an insult. It's just the fact, like, when you don't know what, what shit, if you, like, have it, you know, you wouldn't go, like, like I said, you wouldn't go to a restaurant in the 1950s and sit down with other people from the 1950s if you were born in my time. You just wouldn't. You'd think it was stupid. So most kids, yeah, they'll fucking watch the original trilogy. They'll like it, but they won't own it. And, like, like, like I said, They'll enjoy the current stuff. They won't own up to my music. They'll like what they like to listen to. Mm -hmm. That's how shit evolves, right? But shit can de-evolve, and people can still pick it up. And I feel like that's what Star Wars is doing. It's slop that people are eating, yeah. and some people like it, and some people don't. But I feel like like younger people are going to like it because fuck, it's still it's it, it's not all bad, but yeah. you know. But people do reject newer stuff, too. I mean, was Terminator 3, you know, more highly regarded than Terminator 2? No. Okay, but once again, this is like, once again, this is a bigger franchise than that. Well, fair enough. Yeah, Terminator is, it was big, but yeah, it's like a movie every few years as opposed to constant. Like, Star Wars is just like constant stuff now. For me, I feel like more like either diehards, like super diehards would like that, those types of movies. Or, like, people who have never fucking seen Terminator before who are going to take their kids. Like, not kids, but, like, like take their, like, I don't know. Teens. They're, they're like, 50-year-olds who are taking, like, who are going to go with the rest of the family. Like, it's a very specific demographic that are, like, thumbing, thumbs up in, like, the really bad Terminator movies. <laughs> yeah, I had, I, had a good, I had a good time with my family, so it gets an A+. Plus. It wasn't I wanted to go see Jack. And my, my thoughts on Genesis the first time around was, hey, it had Matt Smith in it, and it was okay. Oh, like, yeah. my time rewatching Genesis was like, oh, shit, this actually sucked, and I paid a movie ticket for it. That was the one with, like, Arnold, but he was, like, old, and wasn't John Connor, yeah, they, like, he was made of, like, nanobots or something? Yeah, they, they pretty much tried to rewrite the entire movie. They tried to get rid of Terminator 2 with it. Oh, and, and that's why people... Well, and then Dark Fate took it even further, where they're just like, oh, yep, John Connor, he just got killed, like, as a kid. The end. Yeah. Dark Fate was supposed to eliminate the other movies. They retconned everything. They pretty much said Dark Fate took place after 2. The complete destruction. Because that's what I'm saying. Terminator is all time travel. So it's... Yeah. Here's the timeline so given went, to you. So you went back in time, you shot Marty McFly in the face with a shotgun, and he, he's dead. And then you uh, you took Doc Brown yeah. and you ran him over a couple of times with the DeLorean, and he's dead. And you blew up the You'll DeLorean. <laughs> what happened to Maris Targaryen and her fucking Terminator? Oh yeah, Amelia Clark. Yeah, you'll never know what happened to her fucking thing. Yep. And it, it's, it's it's not. Is it? It's never. What, what is, never what is, what's even going on? I, is James Cameron even part of this stuff, or are these? Like directly I mean, just just burning up the previous person's script and starting all over. I think somebody else took over the Terminator movies. I can't remember. Or are they just trying to be shocking at this point? Like, oh, you'll never guess what happened. I would look it up, but uh, I'll have my class form uh, with me. Yeah, Terminator. I I own Terminator One now. For the longest time, I only had Terminator Two because mm -hmm. I was like, that's the best one. But I rewatched Terminator One. I just said, you know what? I just I should own this in my collection. This is where it all started. This is where the the big ideas came from. And despite the, the special effects being a little dated, I mean, it uh, it works. It's a story. It does what it set out to do. It's pretty. I you believe it or not, I still like it like originally better than two. I still like two a lot, but like, mm -hmm. well, it, the original. It, it piggybacks on it. It's like. If you don't, if you haven't seen the first one, it's not quite as impactful. Because, the Terminator Two, yeah, is the is the best sequel. Right, it 
capitalizes on the first one and it makes a really good movie out of it. Out, out of its out of the next chapter. Yep. It's not like it didn't just feel like a ham hocked like next chapter. Make money. Here we can cash it in. Yep. Fuck and even like the what was it? They made like a like a like a short for like a video game. Was it a video game or something for like a like a specialty? I can't even remember what it was for. Like like Universal Studios or something. I even saw that and that looked fucking dope as shit. <coughs> but like everything about that series was awesome. And then here came Rise of the Machines. Yeah, I saw that in theaters. <laughs> Talk to the hand. <laughs> Did you did you come out reeking of shit? Because that <laughs> I saw Ter- I saw Salva- Terminator Salvation in theaters as well, and I will admit I I I think they had already shown the or you you heard the audio of uh, Christian Bale like blowing up on the set. <laughs> it's really funny because like when I first saw Salvation, I actually didn't mind it. I was also like fucking nineteen years old. I was so... I was waiting for the scene though where he would get angry. <laughs> And it, I'd catch a glimpse of like what he said on the set, but no, there's just there's a there's a I I can't remember the I've only seen it once, but like there's a, a there's a point where his character raises his voice just slightly, and you're like, oh man, here it is, and it's like, no, no, <laughs> just back stays in character. He's a professional, you know. The cameras weren't rolling, you know. You and I done professionally. <laughs> We're done professionally. <laughs> yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. I mean, he's lived it down now, but that's one of the classics. One of the classic uh, rants. Well, come over there and I will kick your ass. <laughs> All in English, too. Yeah. Doesn't have any accent. He is full on fucking John Connor in that scene. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the themes of the first Terminator to the second one. Like, in the second one, it's like, oh, the, the, the machine... I mean, yes, he's following orders, he's following programming in both cases, but it's like, oh, he's learned to, like, care, and, like, you know, John Connor teaches him the value of human life, even though he, like, <laughs> he cripples a lot of people, he doesn't kill, uh, but, like, in the first one, it's just, like, he does so much wrong, it's almost like, even though he's not human, it's like, uh, he has an arc, like the Terminator himself, it's like, he does all this evil stuff, and then he does good, and then he sacrifices himself, and it's like... It's complete. like the funny thing in Dark Day, right? Mm-hmm. He killed John Connor, completed his programming, and then went to go find a wife. Because that's what you do. <laughs> Get yourself a regular job, delivering pizzas. It's a regular job. Yeah. It's like, what are you supposed to do at the rest? It doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure the original like canon for that was like, I believe it's they complete their programming, they're supposed to, like... Self-destruct. No, nope. Or self-destruct. Yeah, they're supposed to get... So that they, the humans don't reprogram them or some shit like that. They cannot self-terminate. Yeah, or maybe John Connor did that. Uh, you know, he wouldn't... Because, yeah, they, well, that would be the other thing. It's like, okay, so they kill John Connor, but he leaves the technology in the past. Who's to say the technology would have to serve Skynet? What if humans used it to build their own robots so that they could fight Skynet. Like, I mean, there's there's other ways you could imagine. That whole it just thing. makes sense early. Miles Bennett Dyson. Yep. yep. Judgment Day is inevitable. One point one gigawatts. Wow! The time travel. Back to 1955, Marty. Come on. Yeah. Where we're going, we don't need roads. No, we just need to pump iron. <laughs> yeah. You're, <laughs> like, you're too pumped up. Have Arnold in every movie, just just replace whoever it is. Supercomputer. Muad'Dib, you got to harvest the spice. Come on. <laughs> the sandworms are coming. Let's go. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Luke, feel the force. <laughs> Take your Jedi weapon. Pump yourself up with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know if it would work, but <laughs> I'm surprised someone hasn't deep faked him into everything. It's like Arnold and everything. Uh, Nicholas Cage, the character he plays in the in the Wicker Man, like deep fake him into everything. <laughs> and Adam uh-huh. Sandler, of course, from uh, that Billy Madison. <laughs> Nicholas Cage as Superman in one of their movies. I did not know that. Yep. Yeah, in the Flash, they put the concept in there. <laughs> Although they changed it slightly. I, I kind of remember that script. I think it leaked and, and you could read it. But it's like Superman... Well, they said Superman can't fly. And he's fighting a giant spider. Although I remember it being that he couldn't fly, but the suit made him fly or something. It was some weird, like, cannon-breaking reimagining of Superman. Yeah, and it was going to be Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. I'm all eaters right now. Fluid. No. No. Not the bees. No. The bees. <laughs> Get to the speeder. Look at my lightsaber. Come Come on. On. Yep. Good old Jacer. Yeah, see, now that you've got a porch and you got the pipe. Now you just need to sit the sit the kids down and say, "Listen here, listen. Back in my day, we had CGI and it was it was terrible, and we knew it was terrible and we liked it." <laughs> yeah. Listen here. Oh, that spider delight. Ah. Yep. I need to refill it. I think. Listen here, Jenny. Back in my day. Yep, we took the, we took the match out and we lit it on the bottom of our shoe and somehow it worked because it was they were strike anywhere matches. Now I'm now I'm all irritated. I can't fish my pipe. My lighter's out of fluid. Yep. Should get a cigar. So yeah, so we're not really up to date on Star Wars. No, not particularly, but we will be eventually. We will be. We will be. <laughs> my, my lighter comes with a, like a little pipe holder uh, for holding. Did you get one of those Lord of the Rings lighters that has like the really long handle? Um, I do have a Church Warden pipe. Uh, I want to get the long Gandalf one, but they're expensive. Oh, uh, yeah. But they're called Church Wardens. Church Wardens. Ah, see? found an expert I'm not an expert by any means but I do have a church warden cool. I was going to use it but it takes forever and you have to relight it all the time uh, so you need definitely need the lighter yeah it's a uh, it is a relax a relaxing thing so like you lean back you light it and you let the wind and your breathing kind of like keep it going that kind of stays in your mouth while you're holding it the whole time. So I chose this just in case I had to like realign the camera or mess with something. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so Gen Con's coming up. I'm trying to get ready for that. I, uh, ordered a whole bunch of, whole bunch of, uh, hero quest fans, t-shirts. And if I can't get rid of those things, I mean, you're welcome to have <laughs> one or two <laughs> or three. Bro, pawn all your Hero Quest merch on me. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, you can shill that stuff on on your stream. Yeah, man. We need to get. So, I think as far as merch, did you ever get a merch shop for your uh, for your Twitch channel? Um, I do have. Well, I used to. I used to have a merch store on my page, but um, when I had to reactivate it, it went away. So. Oh. You can merch from me, but I don't know why you would. It costs a fucking mint. It's like thirty bucks a t-shirt. It's like you just you just really want to support the stream. It's not you just need a t-shirt. You need a clean t-shirt. If you strange bus and say that I watched a strange bus and all I got was this stupid t-shirt, <laughs> it's five dollars. Yeah. Well, I was kind That's of pretty think- much. Yeah, I was kind of thinking, well, maybe instead of just like asking people to like to try to sell them, 
um just be like hey just just subscribe you know something like that post your you want put, to. Post your, put, put a link on your site on your twitch channel and then when you go to gen con yeah do you, are you gonna get a stand uh no i'm just gonna be there you get like a little stand for your t-shirts like here for stands for cheer that's what i should do yeah you legally love it uh, I hope so. <laughs> no pictures. Yeah. I mean, I, I did I did everything Stop. I could to transform it, so it's not the it's not like the same HeroQuest logo. It's like different. So, and it clearly says fans on it, so it's not like an official. This is not an official, you know, Hasbro endorsed product. Right. So. I'd say as long as you're legal, legally allowed to sell it, yeah, you could chill it out at probably Gen Con, but. I think at Gen Con, you'd probably need a license or a stand or something. You can't oh. just sell it on the street. Yeah, just be standing around, like, hey, hawking it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then that'll be like that. Uh, I think hey, is a legal hey, district. You didn't. You didn't buy a. You didn't buy a, a. A table or whatever. You didn't buy a spot. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was just thinking, like, okay, so if I just, I mean, I know several of the people that are going, assuming they don't cancel the last minute or have some problem but it's like i figure at least at least i'll have a t-shirt for each of those people and if some of them don't show up or whatever i'll have a few left over there you go i still got some t-shirts from the last time you were yeah me yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's fun it's i'm but definitely I, I want... what's that so I've worn them a couple times, but I've tried to wear, wear them on stream. Yeah, that's cool. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I think if I if I had a Strange Bus merch, it, I want to have like one of those beanies, like the hat with the logo on it. That'd be kind of cool. Oh yeah, and it, I think it all the merch that I had had my old logo on it, so I have to remake merch anyway. The eight bit sprite. I feel like one of these times I should I should do the whole thing. I get the. Get the uh, the flannel shirt. Get the the cap. I don't know if I just like not shave for a couple days. And uh, I know your look has changed a little bit since then, but it's just like <laughs> it's like listen, we're just gonna we're just gonna hang out. We're gonna do our thing, and that's what it is. You're gonna like mimic my style. Yeah, I'd be like, listen, listen here. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Dressed in strange but just yeah. strange but smart. Yeah, you probably pass off as me. And then we'll get we'll get you with the uh, with the the gray beard and the the cape. <laughs> switch places. We won't say we'll switch our audio so it sounds like like when I'm talking, you're talking, and vice versa. Just see if people notice. It's like a that'll hobby. be the only time that Zargon ever gets revealed. Yep. You'll have to wear the aviator. So It'll, it was me all along. Yep. We got a comment from Encarmine. He uh, he enjoyed our last episode. Uh, we were talking oh. about. Yeah. So Tom, he... doing well, dude. I really do. Uh, welcome in, and uh, yeah, hope everything's going good for you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, he's he's working for Tops now. So, okay. But like, I, once in a great while, he'll just kind of show up. And, you know, drop a, a good word. I mean, I understand he can't really, like, give us a whole blow-by-blow blow of, like, how things went down back in the day. But it's cool that he's, like, still still around. He hasn't just, like, disappeared, <laughs> you know. Yeah, glad to see him visiting every now and then. Hey, real quick, I know that we're, we're in the conversation. I'm going to check on my kids real quick. Can we take a quick BRB? Oh, yeah. He's about Gotta do the BRB. Okay, well, everybody, thanks for checking out the Rantcast. We will be back. More more content. Oh, you really like Discord? Well, I mean, I can see you, but... Oh, there you are. There he is. He's back. <laughs> it's like American Psycho right here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I need to check out some video tapes. <laughs> oh man, one hour photo. I was thinking there for a second. Uh, all right, so we're back with Strange Bus here on the Redcast. And uh, 
Do we hear crickets chirping out there in the countryside? Oh man, it's wonderful out. I could be out here for hours. Do you get this is what keeps me sane, brother? Yeah. Do you? Uh, well, I know on the out in the country, there's less light pollution. Do you get to see good star star viewing out there. Uh, right now it's really cloudy, oh. but yeah, usually. And when it's not Fourth of July, like I will probably won't be able to do this outside next week because with Fourth of July and everything, you're gonna hear people lighting off fireworks like crazy. Fireworks, yeah. So, um, I know that. I'm surprised there aren't any going off now because they were going off right before the rant cast started. Oh, yeah. But uh, In honor of the yeah. rant cast, yeah. Like I said, you go a little more down my street and then it starts to become a full neighborhood. But like right here, it's just like we're right on the outskirts of town. So Perfect, yeah. Uh, I'm between three different cities. So it's it's wonderful. When the cars stop driving down the street, yeah, you hear the crickets. You hear all sorts of things. The only thing that, like right now, because I'm I'm moving in, the difficult thing is is because I'm the we didn't buy right yet because of the the way the housing market is. So um, we are renting with the intent um, of purchasing property, but um, we like the area here. So Ribby's here. Uh, I, I like the fact that like we're taking the first year to do that because I can take a look at this place, see if I want to, you know, grab it or grab a you know a different place because there's lots of available property over here. Um, the only negative I notice, at least here, is that we get lots of bugs. Okay. And if a property manager doesn't take care of the place, which they didn't, the last people who lived here um, didn't do any major landscaping because they didn't own it. And, and I always believe that, like, where you live, it's a reflection of you. So there's a very, there's a very large lawn here. Uh, it's very weedy. It grows very fast. And I'm probably the worst lawn on the block right now. So um, we get bugs a lot, like, you know, spiders and stuff like that. So right now we're, we're taking care of that. That's our biggest issue is moving in to a vacant place. You know, taking care of bugs because we get a lot of them coming from, they like, get a lot of harvestmen and spiders that come from the fields and stuff. Bugs, so, spiders. Yeah. Got to exterminate them. <laughs> but besides that, I don't know if the wind's catching the fun. It's getting windy out here, but like, um, sounds okay. Besides, it's not super bad. It's, it's very quiet, it's very peaceful, it's nice, and I'm not too far away from either town. I'm about a three-minute drive to each town. So, so you can still pick up a pizza if you need to, that sort of thing. Food, anything, it's like literally right around the corner. Nice. So... But a nice, a nice little respite from the hustle and bustle of the city. Yeah, like literally, this is this is the exact spot I asked for. Like, because I've I've always told people I don't really want to be out in the boonies because you don't get good internet there. So it's kind of a necessity to have it these days if you want to work from home or be productive or do anything like that. You got to be Joe um, Rogan and have the fiber optic network going out in the desert. <laughs> you don't have to be crazy, but like I like to stream. So yeah, I would like to have a decent internet connection, and I have one. I have the same the same internet I had from the old place. They just transferred it over, um, and so it's it's nice, but it's also not super busy. Like that street gets busy during that one street that I'm on gets busy during rush hour and in the morning, like between eight and ten. But besides that, this, the traffic you're hearing now is about the traffic that you get throughout the day. It's usually really pretty peaceful. Um, during the summertime, like I said, you get your occasional douchebag that'll ride the motorcycle as fast as you can down the road. <laughs> or you'll get people who blast music, but, like, I, you know, can't help that. Because, like I said, we still live on the outskirts of town. Sure, yeah. And there are people from one part of town to the other or something like that, and they, they want to rev their engines and go really fast. Um, it's dangerous here because I live right up on, on an uphill area of the drive, so... 
when you back, you can't really back out because if you back out, there's about a two second window where if somebody's speeding, they have reaction to stop if you're oh. pulling out. So I usually like turn around from my driveway because there's like a little like section. It's really nice. So um, I can turn around that way. I can just drive out of my driveway real quick. There's lots of people get reckless over here. But yeah, it's super nice. And like I said, everybody's been super nice here. So yeah, that's cool. That's that's all good stuff, man. Well, uh, I saw Ribby in there earlier. He's gonna be at at Gen Con, and uh, I see Jacer, I see Wardicon. Thanks for checking us out, guys. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had Strange Bus on the on the rant cast. It's good to have him back. So, what do you and- think? What do you think about the future of? Uh, how things are going. Oh, yeah. So, um, and so from what we've talked about and um, kind of my, my, my game plan for the future of the podcast and the future of my streaming goes is I, I don't plan on quitting. I don't plan on you know stopping this or not like being part of the rank cast anymore. Um, it's just right now we're still unpacking. So right now, this is how kind of how I'm gonna have to operate if I do the podcast. Um, is it's gonna come from my phone. So this was kind of my demo for the night. Uh, so far, my phone's holding up yeah. just fine. Um, if I'm at a job or if I'm coming back, I'll probably be doing stuff from my phone. It's not gonna be great quality, but it's all I can offer at the moment. Um, I want to stay active with the community that we do have. Um, and I want to get back to doing regular streams. So, like I said, I'm going to be picking up where I left off a couple months ago with Yakuza, and then um, on my channel. And then, uh, come August, I'm going to bite the bullet, and I'll be getting Star Wars Outlaws, because I hate myself. Oh, no. <laughs> and that will be that will be my my review stream. Um, so I'll be playing that and seeing how that plays through if it plays. So I, uh, might be taking one for the team. I have mid hopes for that game being at $70, but the ultimate edition being 150. Dang. These companies must really need the money. Basic version. Even though I told myself I wouldn't, uh, because I'm a horrible person. Don't buy Ubisoft games, please. Don't do it. I don't vouch for them. But I have been playing them recently, so just to keep myself entertained. Well, yeah. when I can, anyway. Yeah. Wild Ghost Recon Wildlands has been a game I've been playing lately. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Gonna be that time. But yeah, I, I, you know, I, I find that the the mid tier games lately have caught my attention for some re- some reason, and I don't know if it's just because I've been dying for any sort of entertainment, or <laughs> it's just the fact that like I'm tired of buying brand new games all the time and being disappointed, or trying to search through Steam and looking for sales on indies that just are barely hitting the mark. So I just have been playing what I have. So, when I get back up, I'll be doing, um, like I said, I'll just be playing YouTube again, and then... I enjoyed the streams. I, I checked out some of that. It was fun. This? Yeah, man. I, I love the, that series. It's a great series. It's um, pretty time-consuming. So, Zero is going to take some time, and then I'll probably take a little break in between for Outlaws. And then we'll come back to Yakuza 0. And then, you know, when I get some free time, I'll I'll probably just play some Wildlands on the side. So I did do a, a mod conversion not too long ago, right before, like, right before I started packing. And that was, I did a mod conversion of Starfield, um, which was like a full Star Wars conversion. It was like over, about it was about 100 mods. And I had to use a mod manager for it. Wow. Um, 
So I did like a like a twenty five minute stream to test it. Like I think it was on my last official stream. Um, I don't think I saved the VOD for that. So, but the it was like I had like uh, the third. You had the Bubba Fett thirteen thirteen armor from the canceled game thirteen thirteen. Oh yeah. And like, yeah, I was able to get the jetpack and everything working and. It was very cool. They've updated it since then because Starfield updated, so that was nice. So I might go through modding again on stream. So let me ask um, you, did the Star Wars 1313, did that stuff get leaked? Or is this just people basing it on like trailers and stuff? I think it's based on like what the, the game looked like and the gameplay that was revealed. I don't think any textures from the game leaked. Okay. I could be wrong. Because so it's like those re recreated, yeah, those textures and stuff are pretty freaking accurate, and they look good. So, well, that's a good cool thing. But some people have like the Mandalorian as uh, a costume. Um, they also converted each each faction in Starfield. So you've got the Empire, you got the Rebellion, you've got the Pirates set as um, kind of the mercenary faction. So. Or the Shadow Collective, which is kind of nice. Um, there are ships, but you have to build them yourself, which is very difficult. But yeah. Right, cool. So I'm, I'm not gone, I'm not dead, I'm just... I have to take this hiatus for... But my shit's not put together yet. Fair enough. Well, I'm hoping to get some more stuff done with my stuff like after Gen Con's over that's just been kind of consuming my my thoughts day to day I mean we tried to do all this stuff for Hero Quest but like the biggest the biggest thing that we talked about was the uh the AI cover although I guess my my view on that has weakened quite a bit like a lot of people have convinced me that it's not AI that it's just a really cheesy photoshop job <laughs> and I suppose all that feedback is going to go back into the Hero Quest thing but People have high hopes for Jungles of Deltarac, and we're going to be playing that um, August 1st through 4th uh, at, in, in Indianapolis. And I'm really looking forward to meeting the other HeroQuest players. So as far as our streams go on HeroQuest fans, um, I thought I was going to be gone all weekend. So I was like, oh, this is the last stream we're going to get to do until like after the 4th. But actually, I will be available tomorrow. So I'm thinking we'll be starting a new quest, a new uh, Hero Quest session, because um, I I've not been playing a lot of games outside of Hero Quest. But uh, we were gonna do um, the Crypt of Perpetual Darkness, so Joe Manganiello's like exclusive proprietary set that has not been released into retail. It was just part of that crowdfunding campaign. So that's ten quests. They don't look like they're the greatest quests, but I mean people still want to see them and. We do what we can to make it fun, so I think we'll we'll do that. We'll get that started. Okay. And then Saturdays, yeah, we'll be taking a bit of a break. So this this weekend, I'll be hiking instead, weather permitting. And then Fourth of July, I'll be off. And then we'll continue Rise of the Dread Moon because we finished Mage of the Mirror. And and I feel like we've we've kind of even though people liked the frozen horror and mage in the mirror and i had a blast doing them those are kind of like the hardest expansions to get through i feel like because they're so long and they're so difficult <laughs> you have to do so many modifications to make it like playable whereas some of these others may go fairly quickly and we may just have more variety so i'm kind of looking forward to that so the best uh is maybe yet to come on that but yeah are you doing any modded streams like doing your like uh, custom quests or anything like that uh we haven't we haven't done that yet um i i have been thinking about because at one time i was going to be doing like once a month we were going to be doing like a guest stream where i go over to this guy's house he had his, his own studio and doing all that but that kind of fell through because of some other personal stuff that was going on but maybe 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 we'll get that going again and that was like a good time to do like a one-off like just do a different adventure that's not part of the main campaign 
Um, just do something like that. I have written some quests. I just don't know how great they're going to be for the stream. So maybe I should just like sit down and write something. Of course, I mean, people I know have made stuff that that we could try. I mean, there's lots of there's there's hundreds and hundreds of custom quests out there. But it's like, what would be something good that we could sit down and play together? You know, with the with the Twitch chat and everything. I mean, we can make it work. But yeah, it's a good idea. Right on. Yeah, but I was thinking if we just if we only did official quests, we've got about like three years worth of material <laughs> of like weekly streams. So we've got plenty to work with. But I, I guess I'm not I'm not like some of these streamers where they're just in a hurry to get it all done. You know, like you're watching a show and you're just going to binge it until you just hate it. It's like, why not just enjoy it? Take your time, go through. If you need to take a break, do something else, do that for a while, come back. You know, just let it happen like that. Like, what's wrong with that? Right. And I am seeing that, like, people in the chat, and, you know, it's people just, sometimes they don't say much, they just kind of lurk, and other times they share. But I see a lot of people, like, hosting their own games, playing their own um, sessions and things. And so it's like, I'm glad that they're not just waiting for me to do everything. Like, they're going out, doing doing their thing they're having people over they're playing games or they're playing virtually and you know it's a vibrant fun community to be a part of everybody shares their stories you know this is how i would do it well no i do it this other way it's like okay well i hate to interrupt i hate to be that guy oh. but it's starting to rain on me it's starting to rain yep oh dang you should have felt it in your uh, in your big toe or in your oh my my knees acting up. Here comes that storm. Get to work on that. Develop that skill. Okay. Well, well, well uh, uh, we're we're getting to about to about the time anyway. So I've I've enjoyed this talk, this rant cast. Make um to be back uh, for the next rant cast. Are we doing something next week? Uh, let me take a look. I think we, well, next week is the 4th of July, so we're going to, we'll, we'll take next week off. How about that? But the week after, so like July 11th, we could do it right. if you're around. I'll be here. Right. Hopefully myself will be set up by then, so um, I'll be inside. <laughs> next, or you can't cast, <laughs> says Ruby. Well, and I mean, we we have several people that have made it work with phones. So like J Sir, Bohemius, a few other people. I think Glasgow Gargoyle. There's people that use phones, so it it it's been all right. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I don't know if it's messing with me or not, but we've we've got rain, so I don't I don't know if it's picking up or if it's dying down. It's done this about three times today, so. Um, but I am gonna. I'm gonna dip out. Sorry for the short, the shortness, yeah. but just tell um, tell Kathleen Kennedy don't was it don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. <laughs> That's right. Quit. Yeah. Oh, make Star Wars good. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. Just you know, don't fuck with the formula, man. All these people like try to make it their way. Yeah. And it's 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 wacky. You know. You had you pretty much had the gold mine in your pocket. Yep. And you decided to put your fingers in the bowl and fuck with it. Yep. Now it's got your so, fingerprints all over it. It's gross. Nobody wants it's it. All contaminated. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, thanks everybody. I appreciate uh, appreciate your patience and uh, you know thanks for tuning in. And I'll be back. Should be back shortly for my regular streams and for more rank tasks. So, thanks again, Kurgan, as well, for taking over for me and managing the last like month or two. Yeah. So my pleasure, man. No, no problem. All right. All right. Thanks everybody for joining us on the Rantcast, <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll get uh, Carl Casey here to play us out. And uh, there's no words. <laughs> All right, everybody take care and uh, have a safe uh, Independence Day. And uh, we'll catch you next time on the Redcast.
Bye, guys. Bye.